What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Leon Edwards willing to give Nate Diaz a rematch with a win over Chimaev. This past weekend, longtime top ranked UFC welterweight Leon Edwards pulled off an all time comeback as he knocked out reigning welterweight champion Kamaru Usman with just under a minute to go in their championship fight. The knockout sent shockwaves across the MMA community as Edwards followed up the incredible feat by giving a post fight interview for the ages. Leading up to the fight, UFC President Dana White confirmed that if Hamza Chimaev defeats Nate Diaz on September 10th, he will be next in line to challenge Usman for the welterweight strap. Now, on the heels of Edwards' historic win, the newly crowned champ couldn't help but imagine what an upset for Nate Diaz would mean for the Stockton superstar. He spoke on the MMA Hour this week saying, Ah, uh, uh, imagine the scenes. <laughs> the scenes. You versus Nate uh, too. Imagine the scenes. Imagine the scenes. I'll be... Uh, would you be I'll, open to I'll, that I'll, one? I'll 100% give that a shot. Yeah, that would be... Uh, the scenes would be crazy. And I 100% give that a shot. And that's to G, man. I always said it. Even after the fight, you know, he, he is who he is. He's one of the guys that... He's, he, the game has never cha changed him, you know, so... If that, if that does happen, then Nate's definitely getting shot. Diaz and Edwards famously fought last year in a fight that Edwards was comfortably winning for the first four rounds before being rocked by a big straight left from Diaz in the fifth. Despite that, Edwards managed to recover and pick up a unanimous decision victory to secure himself a title shot. With many counting Diaz out against Chimaev, there would be no greater feat than pulling off one of the greatest upsets in UFC history in the final fight on his UFC contract. If he does, how do you see a rematch with the newly crowned champ, Leon Edwards, going? Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all the latest news. Kamaru Usman gives first interview since brutal KO loss to Leon Edwards. Following his brutal knockout loss to Leon Edwards at the 11th hour of their UFC 278 headline fight this past weekend, former welterweight champion Kamaru Usman has broken his silence. Usman did not appear at the UFC 278 post-fight press conference following the knockout and was transported to the hospital for evaluation, according to UFC President Dana White. Despite his absence, it's being reported that the former champ spoke to Dana White via phone call which was passed to White during the press conference. This week, Usman spoke to TMZ to give his first official interview since the knockout, saying, Great. It was, it was just a, what a shot. It was a great shot. A great shot. I'm talking. Hail Mary to the Super Bowl <laughs> in the Super Bowl last 10 seconds. That's a great, that was a great shot. Man. After the fight, videos began to emerge of the scenes in the arena as those in attendance reacted to the stunning knockout. One of those videos contained the reaction of Usman's family members in attendance, including his daughter, who were understandably distraught by what happened in the cage. While some would expect the former champ to be reluctant to watch the footage of the knockout, that couldn't be further from the truth. No. I watched it fight now, what, three, four times? Four times? We watched it once yesterday. I've watched it three times this morning, today. The four times now. No, it's not hard at all. You know how many people I've done that to? You know? And it's not hard at all. It, it happened. Like, that's the thing. That's the beautiful thing about this sport is that happens, but we forget what was actually taking place in that fight. So I'm not down at all. As Usman pointed out in his interview, leading up to the knockout, he looked great in the fight. As the fight progressed, many believed that Usman was en route to yet another impressive win. However, going into the fifth round, Edwards' corner made it clear to him that he was down on the scorecards and he needed to capture lightning in a bottle if he wanted to be more than just another chapter in the Nigerian Nightmares title run. With all signs currently pointing to the pair running it back for a trilogy bout, this time in London, Usman is eager to see what date the UFC targets for the rematch. When that fight happens, do you think Usman will be able to reclaim welterweight gold or will Edwards emerge victorious once again? Colby Covington reportedly sidelined until 2023 with a broken jaw. Ever since Colby Covington's dominant win over friend-turned-rival Jorge Masvidal earlier this year at UFC 272, fight fans have been clamoring for news regarding the top-ranked welterweight's next opponent. While it looked like a grudge match with former teammate Dustin Poirier was next for chaos, an alleged incident in Miami at the hands of Masvidal saw Covington sustain injuries 
that have reportedly continued to plague the former title challenger. Fellow top-ranked welterweight Gilbert Burns, who is coming off a thrilling three-round loss to streaking contender Hamza Chimaev earlier this year, spoke to the All-Star recently to shed some light on the situation, while explaining that fans who wish to see him match up with Covington in a potential number one contender bout might have to wait. I think Kobe got a very bad injury with the circuit punch from Masvidal. He got surgery and for as long as I know, he just available March next year. There was the rumors that he was very bad. He had a, a neck injury, that, that nerve went very bad. He lost a little bit of movements on the neck, but he kind of broke his jaw again. He had surgery and the surgery didn't went good. He's still doing the PT, he's not training. He just, if everything goes okay, he's only back in March. That's what I heard. I don't, if you ask me what's the best option for me, I would say Masvidal, December, January, and Kobe next, you know, after that, so. Currently, every fighter besides Burns in the top five of the welterweight division has a fight booked besides Kamaru Usman, who will likely have an immediate rematch with Leon Edwards for the welterweight title. With limited options for the number four ranked Brazilian, do you think Burns should pursue a fight with number nine ranked Jorge Masvidal or fight another ranked opponent? Give us your thoughts in the comment section below. Askar Mozarov suspended after failing a drug test. The curious case of Askar Mozarov continued this week after it was revealed that the former UFC fighter had been temporarily suspended by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for failing a drug test back in June. Leading up to Mozarov's debut with the promotion earlier this summer, his 25-7 record had begun to draw some attention as it was ultimately determined that the Ukrainian board fighter and his team had gone to incredible lengths to fabricate his record, including legally changing his name. After losing in the first round to Alonzo Menefield at UFC Fight Night, Volkov vs. Rosenstreich, the Black Jaguar was subsequently released from the promotion with a corrected record of 15-14 on Sherdog. While many thought that Mozarov's saga would end there, news has now surfaced that he's been temporarily suspended by the NSAC after testing positive for a metabolic modulator, a category of performance-enhancing drugs that reportedly aids athletes in improving recovery rates. For his part, Mozarov is seemingly taking things in stride. The former UFC light heavyweight posted on this Instagram story today, saying, I will be back in the UFC in 2024. I want to show last fight in 185 pounds. With Mozar's recently failed drug test adding to the multitude of problems he's caused for the promotion, it's unlikely he'll ever be re-signed by the UFC following a potential suspension for his latest infraction. For the 27-year-old formerly known as Arthur Shatakov, this could very likely signal the end of his professional MMA career as promotions in the United States such as Bellator and the PFL will likely steer clear of him as well. Henry Cejudo offers advice to Hamza Chimaev ahead of Nate Diaz's fight. Former champ champ Henry Cejudo put together quite the impressive resume as a coach during his short-lived retirement from the sport of MMA. Cejudo has recently been credited with assisting numerous fighters in preparation for upcoming fights, including Wei Li Zhang, the Korean Zombie Chan Sung Young, and John Jones, just to name a few. Now, ahead of Hamza Chimaev's highly anticipated UFC 279 scrap with Nate Diaz, that could see the undefeated Chechenian fighter earn himself a welterweight title shot, Cejudo has offered some advice to Boers. He spoke recently on his YouTube channel saying, um, I don't know, man. If I was Hamza Chimayev, dude, I would go up. I really would. Because these guys are not going to fight until February. Um, I think Hamza beats him. I think he challenges Israel, the winner of Israel and... Uh, the winner of Israel and uh, Pereira. I wouldn't wait for Kamaru or Leon because he's looking at it. He's looking at potentially a year before he fights somebody like that. I know Hamza wants to be active and he's struggling to make 170. So that's what I would do. Jemayev has put together an incredible run in the welterweight and middleweight divisions since joining the UFC in 2020, winning five straight fights and claiming the record for the quickest turnaround between UFC wins after defeating Reese McKee just 10 days after beating John Phillips in his debut. The three-time Swedish national wrestling champion most recently defeated former welterweight title challenger Gilbert Burns via decision in April, cementing his place as one of the UFC's biggest rising stars. Should he defeat Nate Diaz in September, he will be in the unique position 
of potentially choosing which championship belt he would like to be challenging for. With the trilogy fight between Leon Edwards and former champion Kamaru Usman likely on the horizon at welterweight, do you agree with Cejudo that Chimaev should pursue the winner of November's Adesanya versus Pereira middleweight title fight? Sound off in the comments below. Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.